so talk to us about that first year in business, mm -hmm. right? For you, like, what was the what was the revenue and what was your, I would say like some, I guess some mindset. How were you operating? What was your focus? Surviving, then, not thriving. <laughs> right. And, yeah. In the and first then year how, of business. Right. Yeah. And then this year, how, how that shifted mm. and was it just a matter of, of time or what, or would you say it was a singular moment, something being said and that was the light bulb moment for you mm. or was it a gradual, you know, process for me i can honestly say it's been a it's been a gradual evolution of that whole idea of letting the main thing be the main thing and i know one of my biggest setbacks or or i wouldn't call it a a total like failure i would say when i first started i had the main thing the main thing was teaching educating coaching consulting on velocity banking help people pay off their debt extremely fast, either using the concept or not using the concept, right? It was, you know, providing all the different options in terms of how we can eliminate debt as quickly as possible. And then what happened was the channel grew really fast and then people started grabbing my attention mm -hmm. and they were like, hey, we should partner up with this. Hey, we should partner up with this. And hey, we should partner up with this. And so I started giving a little time here, a little time there, a little time there. And what can be tricky for those listening that will go this route, sometimes you actually will make a lot of money. So you start making multiple streams of income all coming into one central location. It may work. It may actually work. For me, it actually worked mm. until it started to plateau. Like it went like this and it started to plateau and then it was just like steady growth, right? And I'm realizing now in my, in my five, fifth year of business that I need to go back to making videos every single day, pumping out content like we talked about off camera. That's going to be one of my main focuses is delivering the value that my audience wants and then actually asking them what they want to hear, mm -hmm. what they want to learn from me about how I can continue to provide more value to them and how frequently I provide that value, right? So that is something that is a, is a pivot for me as we get ready to close out 2023 going into 2024 that's my goal mm -hmm. should be putting out content that is on the main value offer the main offer that i'm sharing with my audience that they originally came for and then now they're being fed this being fed that this partnership that partnership which are all great they will all provide value to my audience at some point in time but if i just keep honing in on the main thing, it's going to actually bring in more people. And then with back end processes, it will, it will funnel people into the different offers that like you have and mm -hmm. many other partners I work with. So for you, was it a gradual evolution or was it a like light bulb moment? And that led you to hit seven figures. That's a good question. I'd say the first year was about surviving, not thriving. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't even know where you're going. I didn't know how much I was trying to make or what my goal was. I mean, I guess I did put on my phone $150,000 and that was my goal in terms of annual sales. So I'm like, oof, okay. if I do $150,000, I'm going to be rich. Bomb. I'm, I'm a baller, <laughs> you know, which is not to say anything bad about that level of money, but in business, like it seems like a decent amount, but after expenses and yeah. everything, Taxes. it's it's not, I mean, a huge amount, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was my initial goal, but I had no idea really where I was going. I didn't know how to get clients. I didn't know what I was offering. I didn't know who my target audience was. And it would have been easy to quit. It would have been understandable to quit. But that's the difference between people who do get the award or get the next level award and people who kind of think. And they're like, oh, like they're, they're doing something different than I am. Like I'm not, I don't have that because of this I'm or in a that. different industry that, right you know doesn't you know that doesn't really work for my business and I'm not saying that to again put them down I'm just saying it's a negative self-coaching I would say habit that I have you have we all have in a certain area that we kind of just make excuses for ourselves in terms of oh they're big on YouTube because they're talking about this and that's dumb or like that doesn't even work or oh they're making more money than me because their dad started their business or whatever excuse we come up with. But again, it's all negative self-coaching. It's not real. We created in our head to go to sleep at night and be okay with not reaching our potential, our God-given potential, you know, as you mentioned. 
And that's where I think over the years, I kind of just understood that life isn't fair and I don't need to look at other companies or other people and track my progress on theirs. I need to track my progress on how much did I make the first year? Right. How much did I make the second year? Yeah. How, how am I doing in the third year? How about the fifth year? How about the sixth year? And then at that point, I look at it and I'm like, wow, okay, I'm making progress. I'm being productive. Absolutely. And that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. And so I, I don't know if it was a huge mindset shift. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think my mindset shifted once I didn't have to worry about my bills. In the beginning, it was just you're surviving, you're scraping by, like you're not really living. I, I was just surviving at that point. But after a few years, once I kind of got things settled, then I could think more long term. Right. Um, but I'm sure people watching are going to agree. It's hard to think long term when you don't know how you're going to make that next payment or get that next meal or whatever the situation may be. And that's how you and I kind of grew up in those households. And so we're just used to that scarcity, but we got out of that. Absolutely. We said, that's not, not that it's awful or whatever it may be. If that's how you're living, then you can look at it as a step in your process, a phase, but don't think that's your end goal because Denzel and I, we could have easily stayed in that spot very easily. Um, but we chose to say, okay, that's our circumstance at this point, right? When we first met, mm -hmm. that's kind of both of our circumstances. That's not going to be us in however many years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, however long it takes. We're making an intentional decision that that's not how we're going to live, however long it took to make that adjustment. So I think over time, that shift happened. It did take time. Gradual. But of course, yeah, once you start making the money and it just everything works, it seems like it's instant. But it really is people planting seeds three years ago, two years ago, you know, five years ago. And now it seems like, oh, all of a sudden, everything is working great. But it's really been little seeds being planted and little adjustments that's been made um, over the past seven years.